Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to number seven ministries Christian outreach. Today's short sermon is called death by reputation. God is showing me that there is a virtue of the reputation that we leave behind with unbelievers and there is a virtue of the reputation that we leave behind with the believers and with God. And the extreme error or the extreme lie that the devil is going to take us into is that we as a body of Christ, we as a Christian, we are more concerned about how other people see us or more concerned of our reputation that we have in other people's eyes than we are obeying God. That's completely erroneous. That's completely a falsehood. And it's going to take us away from obeying God. The other extreme lie is that we should not be concerned at all about what other people think about us and we should not be concerned at all about the reputation that we leave behind with other people. And I believe that it's easy to take one position or the other, but God wants us to have a balance of the two. And I'm going to explain that because it could be confusing. The first Bible verse that I want to read is 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. And it says, And he must also have a good reputation with outsiders, which is dealing with people who are non-Christians, so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. A perfect example of this is smoking. And I'm not trying to beat up on people who are smoking. I'm going to tell my own story of smoking. When I first got saved, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I am, I am convinced that I was filled with the Holy Spirit because there was a lot of evidence that God gave me so that I knew that I was saved, so that I knew he was my father, so that I knew he saved me. And he brought me from being an atheist to being filled with the Holy Spirit and convinced and secure that I have a relationship with him. And with that being said, and when that was being said, I was still smoking cigarettes. And while I was smoking cigarettes, there was an unbeliever who came up to me. I was holding my Bible and smoking a cigarette and he said, you are supposed to be a Christian. How can you be a Christian while you're smoking cigarettes? And I'm going to tell you why he told me that immediately my flesh rose up and I was offended. I was angry. I didn't say anything, but I'm thinking to myself, how could this man possibly be judging me when he's full of all kinds of wickedness? But later on, God had spoke to me and he told me, I want you to stop smoking cigarettes, not for your sake, but for the sake of others, because they are watching you and you are representing me. And then after that, God told me to choose. Who do you love more, me or the cigarettes? And so then I chose God over the cigarettes. But I want to emphasize that God told me that he wanted me to be blameless before other people because the devil is going to look for people to come into your life and find any fault with you so that he can discourage you, so that he can attack your faith, and so that he can cause you just a little bit of a doubt just a little seed of doubt. He can cause you to question your relationship with God. He can cause you to question your salvation with God. He can cause you to question, do you really have the Holy Spirit living inside of you? That's all he wants to do. And he's going to look for fault also so that he can justify his own sin in his own life by finding fault with you. And so the devil is going to use that as a, tr a tool, a trick, a trap. The Bible says that it's a devil's trap, that we can fall into disgrace, the shame of unbelievers. And they are going to find any, I'm talking about if your hair is out of place, 
they're going to beat you down. And so should we be living our life to please other people? No, but we should be presenting ourselves as a good witness, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, not giving any room for the devil to be able to find fault with us. Are we proclaiming to be perfect? No, we should be the first ones to confess our sins and admit that we still make mistakes. We still fall short from God's glory. We are not equal to Jesus. We are not equal to God. And by doing that, we will set a good example for the unbelievers. And we are to be concerned with this example that we are setting to the unbelievers, to the world. We should be concerned about the reputation that we leave with them. How else are we going to draw them into the kingdom if we blend in with everyone else? We should be set aside. We should be different. Another thing that I would like to mention is that every situation that God allows us to be in has a value. And if we embrace the value of the situation that God permitted us to be in, we will also leave behind a beautiful reputation with the unbelievers. I'm going to give you an example of that. If you work at Burger King and the world says you are nothing, you are the scum of the earth, you are a bum, you make minimum wage, you're poor, you have no value, no nothing. That's what the world may say if you work at Burger King. But God says that you're supposed to take that job and perform it to the glory of God. That you are not to be working for money, but you are to be working as unto the Lord. And you take that job and you see the value of it. That God is trying to teach you something. That he's performing a good work inside of you. And you embrace that situation no matter how uh, small it may seem to be. The Bible says don't despise small beginnings. And when we embrace the value of every situation, even if you're washing dishes, thank God that you have dishes to wash. Thank God that you have the ability to be able to wash those dishes. Embrace every single situation that you're in. And when you see the value of it with the mind of Christ, other people are going to look at you as if there's something different about you and that's going to glorify God. Galatians chapter 2 verse 6. But from those who were of high reputation, what they were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. Well, those who were of reputation contributed nothing to me. What is that Bible verse talking about? It's saying that if you are a super, super Christian and you are in the spotlight, you are on top of the mountain and everybody knows your name and you have a great reputation, you're known as a super Christian. I heard them address a certain TV preacher as a super pastor implying that those that are not on TV and those that don't have as many members are not super pastors. They are just little pastors. You know, God shows no partiality. A pastor is a pastor is a pastor is a pastor. A Christian is a Christian is a Christian is a Christian. Regardless of how many people know your name and regardless of how much of a spotlight you're in, how many people watch you and view you, God shows no partiality as long as you are obeying God. God, as long as you are saying what God told you to say, if you just have but one viewer or 10 million viewers, it's more important that you obey God. But what that Bible verse is mentioning is that if there is someone out there, a super pastor, super Christian, is his reputation in itself going to be able to save me? Is the great reputation of another believer, is it going to somehow comfort me that they have an awesome reputation? An example, say there is a great, wonderful uh, uh, preacher in a mega church. If I'm dying in a hospital bed and I'm dying of cancer, how is that super preacher, pastor, whoever going to help me? I would rather have a pastor of a two-member congregation come to the hospital, lay hands on me, anoint me with oil, and pray for me 
who has no reputation, but has the ability to come and contribute and edify me spiritually. Do you see, there's a practical application of the reputation. The reputation in itself outside of God is not going to help us. But if we combine the two together, then that's where God wants us to be. The next Bible verse that I'm going to read is Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing outside, out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, considering others better than yourself. You know, one way that we can consider other people better than ourselves, that's what the Bible says. You know, a lot of times you'll hear say people will say, and I've even said this myself, uh, no one is better than me, and I'm better than no one else. But the Bible is saying consider other people greater than yourself. And in doing that, we have to serve other people. That's how we consider them to be greater than ourselves, by serving them, not expecting them to serve us but us serving them. And I'm going to tell you another key that we could do that is by complimenting other people. You know, if you've seen that movie uh, Hancock with Will Smith, do you know how hard it was for him to compliment the police officers? Why? Because he was so full of pride and he was full of pride because he was gifted. He was gifted with powers, but he did not have the humility to balance out that gift. So he was not even able to compliment the police officers because he saw them as so minuscule, so nothing. Do we see other people as nothing compared to us? See, if we compliment them, that is a way for us to show that we, are, we value them more than we value ourselves. And that is the mind of Christ. That's the heart of Christ. That's what we should be striving for. Compliment other people. Encourage other people. I don't mean flatter them. Compliment them. Find something good, some, some good attribute that you see God inside of them. And let them know about it because I'm sure I, 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 I want to preach a whole message on the value of encouraging people. The Bible tells us through, from Genesis to Revelation to encourage people when they're doing good. The next Bible verse that I want to read is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I die daily. I die daily. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because if you have been more concerned about the reputation that you have with other people than obeying God, or if you've been guilty about not caring at all about what other people think about you, if you've been guilty of either extreme, it's not too late for you to repent of your sin and die daily. Each day is a fresh start. Each day is a new day for us to get right with God. Thank God for his brand new mercies that are renewed daily. God bless you and have a wonderful day.